नमस्कार हेलो एंड वेलकम टू पी गुरुस चैनल दिस इज एपिसोड 404 ऑफ डेली ग्लोबल इनसाइट्स एंड जॉइनिंग मी इज माय कोहोस्ट श्रीधर चित्याला जी श्रीधर जी नमस्कार एंड वेलकम टू पी गुरुस चैनल नमस्कार गुड मॉर्निंग एंड इट्स अनदर वीक किक ऑफ विद मोर वर्ल्ड इवेंट्स sir um in uh, in tamil nadu where i spend a lot of time these days there i can get to hear excellent transliterated english you know when when if i if i tell them people are uh, saying that balloons flew before then they'll say <laughs> now it is only or before also <laughs> you, you have to translate it into tamil to understand so question that is in front of the american public and i'm sure they are dying to know did balloons fly during trump's time also trump is vehemently denying that i cannot don't buy that your take your take sir no my take is very simple which is effectively um trump is not a person who has got his telescope every day pointing towards the skies uh to find out whether the balloons flew or balloons did not fly it is up to the intelligence officials to report to him whether the balloons flew or did not fly so let's take the case of what happened in the case of biden and then i'll put it back into trump the biden officials knew that and they were tracking this intelligence officials knew that they were tra- tracking the flight of this balloon and basically they felt that if for some reasons if this information is declared it probably will have a diplomatic and political consequences as far as the relationship with china is concerned now coming back to trump there was no intelligence input which stated that there was a balloon flying or balloons flying over united states during his period so therefore in my view what he is saying is okay if it flew when did you tell me that it flew and when did i tell you that you should not take that take those balloons down and by the way during my time the russians were not trying to play fire with me and the chinese were not be it in south china sea or be it in the uh, the 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 the, Atl- the uh, alaskan region which has access to the russians so i in my view he's, he stands clear in terms of his position and if somebody hid the information and did not reveal is obviously we don't know yes indeed and people now are trying to collect the debris and try to analyze what it is that the chinese balloon had when it went across the uh, united states and i have a small hangout where i'm tracking the uh, mapping the path that the balloon took and that is on our channel too uh, we will put that link in description section so you can take a look at that now let's take a quick diversion to market before we come back uh, to united states sir today the markets are going low and there is an expectation that china might start uh, taking crude again which means the crude price might go up um this is the beginning of a week the the start the stock market is going to start in a few hours uh, how do you see this week shaping out sir well, i think there are two data points i think uh, you saw the jobs report come out uh, oh, strange yeah. the strangely strangely good number of jobs means the economy is you know trying to regain its momentum but today ec- economy trying to regain momentum is god is not a good news because that means the interest rates are going to go up and interest rates going up has two consequences both for retail as well as for corporate it brings the profits down it brings takes the mortgage rates up uh making it making it not a very easy market to borrow so the markets reacted on friday by going down so jerome powell is going to speak later this week so the fear is that the rate hike will continue because this means that the inflation is not going to be curtailed so this is the reason why the markets are reacting very unfavorably there is another headwind as well there's no resolution as yet on the debt limit uh that's also weighing in the minds of the markets and uh, back to united states remember viewers a few months ago in fact probably a year ago when the illegals were being housed in various five star and four star hotels in manhattan we predicted 
that this is not going to be good for the country as well as for those poor uh, you know residents illegals who are now suddenly going to be evicted out whenever that happened and now that time has come and guess what they are refusing to vacate their four star five star accommodation sridhar ji how is the biden administration going to handle this are any freebie and that to illegals they've got nothing to lose they might resort to rioting sir no i don't think they're going to be able to vacate any of them uh they were uh, very very well uh, nourished and welcomed um and they took them straight into the middle of right into the heart of manhattan accommodated there's many illegal shelters that have come up right in the downtown areas of many of the uh democratic um let cities be it san francisco be it seattle be it manhattan be it washington dc uh be it downtown uh, detroit be it in minnesota uh be it atlanta so you find that uh many of these places now have flourishing illegals either in five star hotels or in uh the main public uh, thoroughfares and they're just not going to move sri ji they're not going to move well um, i would love to ask this question of miss alexandria o cortez you are in one of the boroughs of new york city why don't you open throw open the doors of your house to to let some of these people come and stay and see how much fun it is and the same goes for mr bernie sanders your head honcho why don't you open your uh, you know uh, martha's vineyard uh, mansion see what happens and 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 for the likes of all the progressives okay it's talk is cheap talk is cheap you are responsible for your consequences and i hold the entire biden administration responsible for this in fact this might be one of those things that will turn the 2024 election i'm afraid because now we are still having 18 20 months left but or perhaps even a little bit more but think about the pressure that's going to build up as the economy will try to come out and manhattan is where people have invested billion sir the shakes will start complaining soon sir i think the shakes are all leaving shri ji where uh, are they going to where are they going to well i think that uh, uh, firstly the you know the always manhattan was considered uh, a good venue as a real estate investment uh, that's one part the second the safety and security and sanctity uh, was was supposed to have been uh, preserved so you where would they go they would probably go to uh, london they would probably go to uh, places such as um, you know uh, monte carlo they would probably go to other venues where there is almost guaranteed safety rather than the present situation in united states regime because there's, there's nothing that to prevent any kind of trespassing and usurping of the property unless they have their own private security guards well um there has there was one episode that i had done a while back uh, where i had talked about two personal security guards of the brother of the emir of qatar being threatened with their lives because they dared to sue their boss and anyway that lawsuit is now winding its way through courts in boston but it, this is not easy and and uh, and and i what about the wall street uh, billionaires and sentinel i don't know the zeros are just getting, keeping on adding up i don't know where they are going to go but essentially this was a huge mistake on part of biden administration to kind of open the doors of the border uh, to open the borders with a vengeance and not even checking what kind of people have come in today sridhar ji i told you in the last episode how bad things were i mean there is open dakaiti going on in nice. in the streets of uh, uh, silicon valley where you know everybody is very educated the people are busy running around and things like that but there is there is a fear now there is a real fear and if california turns red watch out in fact 2022 there were a lot of uh, uh, borderline uh, blue districts that turned red so things are beginning to cook up boil up so let's wait and see how it goes so let's take a look at asia news Indonesia plans to intensify talks with China and other Southeast Asian countries to finalize a code of conduct for the disputed South China Sea. Sir, China already ignored the uh, the uh, World Court. I don't know the court in the Hague 
said, saying that some of these islands belong to, I think, Philippines, if I don't remember, if I remember correctly. They just ignored it. What is this new code of conduct going to do, sir? In my opinion, these guys will do what they think is right. So you are absolutely correct. It related to uh, Sprotly Islands. Yes. Uh, Sprotly Islands sprung up. It is International Court of Justice, ICJ ruling, uh, which gave in favor of uh, Philippines. Um, and China said, I don't follow. I don't agree with the ICJ ruling. So therefore, uh, there goes this so-called center of institutions. China, choose, China and Russia choose and United States choose uh, and major powers choose what they think is right, not all these institutions exist uh, to enforce rules against less powerful institutions rather than the most powerful. Uh, so to your point, what is going on here, Sriji, is there is a theme that is going on, which is China is now slowly begin to, beginning to use its surrogates to exert pressure in many of the nations. And they are using Russia-Ukraine war as an example, as a use case, to say, if you're going to resist and persist, nobody is going to come to your rescue. You are only going to see devastation uh, in your parts of the world. Ukraine is an example. So, for example, if you take ASEAN, Myanmar, Laos, and Cambodia uh, are very, very pro-China, and they are saying, Let's not antagonize the Chinese. Let's work to a framework where both of us kind of agree. Remember, Indonesia is also looking for investments. ASEAN chairmanship is being led by Indonesia. So Indonesia is saying, we don't want to have problems. So let us see whether we can define a code of conduct and adhere to it. And what would be the code of conduct? The code of conduct will be dictated by what the Chinese say. And eventually, that may be the ruling dictum, Sriji. Well, um, another interesting piece of news coming out of Taiwan, the head of the Taiwan opposition party, the Kuomintang party, if you remember Chiang Kai-shek had his name, his party's name was the same. He wants to visit China. Sridharji, so do you think, in your opinion, China has captured the opposition party of Taiwan too? Absolutely, Sriji. I think this is, you remember we talked about wolf diplomacy. So the wolf diplomacy is at work. Uh, I am told that uh, there was a meeting in October, you probably uh, can hear from uh, Elmer or somebody, where a policy meeting was held uh, by, the, uh, by the Chinese Communist Party with a specific strategy around the attack of Taiwan and how the Chi Taiwan would be uh, integrated. So now what we have is uh, Su Tang, uh, if, I get, if I'm correct, pronouncing his name correctly, the story is that this guy, this... Um, Andrusia is meeting uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the China affairs counterpart within China in Beijing, Taiwan, sorry, Taiwan affairs counterpart, in, to have discussions and informal uh, forays in terms of how and what China plans to do if Taiwan doesn't toe the line. Yes, indeed. And I'm having a request to bring uh, a loot, in fact, an iPhone 14 with the highest amount of memory along with <laughs> Apple Watch. Well, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> Do, don't you guys want DGI and other news items? <laughs> don't you love me that much? <laughs> because I'll have to spend a few nights in jail if I do something like that. At any rate, jokes apart, let's take a look at what is happening with Australia. Australia's foreign minister also wants to visit China to normalize relations. Sridharji, I saw some news about Japan also wanting to do the same. Why this sudden love for China, sir? The wolf diplomacy is at work, which is effectively, the story is that uh, this is the time you can see that we sent a balloon over United States. They couldn't even figure out what to, what to do with it. And do you believe that they are going to be coming to your rescue in the event of adversity? I think we have covered this. Asia or ASEAN specifically is the largest trading partner relative to larger than United States as a trading partner to China. Many of these economies are reliant on the Chinese imports and exports. And China has footprint in a quite a number of nations, ranging from Singapore to Hong Kong to Indonesia to uh, even energy uh, cooperation that they're doing with Philippines. Uh, less said, the better about Myanmar and Cambodia and Laos. 
So therefore, I think they are applying the economic pressure and you can now begin to see there's a systematic pattern of, um, of uh, foreign ministers and trade ministers, including Australia, which saw significant decline in its exports revenue because of the brinkmanship that uh, that was, I, I mean, the perceived brinkmanship between uh, Scott Morrison and China, which resulted in reduced trade. That's what you are seeing, the unwielding of the soft power or the hard power of the China and bringing all these people to the negotiating table. Yes, indeed. And uh, you see that if you remember, Kevin Rudd was being called off as, you know, this man has Chinese citizenship. So you have the same party now under Albanese. And, and again, there is warmth uh, uh, and friendship oozing between uh, Australia and China. Sir, one thing I forgot to ask and, and I want to, I'm remiss, I'm so sorry about this. Tomorrow, Joe Biden is going to be giving the State of the Union address. So too. And this is, I'm sure he's going to talk about economy, about the fact that the jobs have uh, uh, risen and that the unemployment is at 3%. That will be his main uh, argument or mainstay of his speech. Sidharji, it is very customary for the opposition to put up a rising star or a possible presidential candidate who will rebut the SOTU, the State of the Union address. Sir, who is that going to be from the GOP side tomorrow? My bet is DeSantis. All right. That's something good. See, this my is telling you... Yeah, go ahead, sir. Please go ahead, sir. Sorry. No, my bet is DeSantis because he is the most powerful governor and uh, he has got enough kind of clout um, to combat. The mainstream uh, Republicans still have uh, some issues with President Trump. What better way than field um, DeSantis to uh, to do the rebuttal? And, and also, viewers, there was another development. The Koch brothers, who never had any liking for Trump, have again come back into the mainstream and saying that they are going to support somebody who's not Trump. So Trump is running into some headwinds now. So we'll wait and see how this goes. But this person who's going to give that speech is a very excellent indicator of which way the GOP is headed. So do tune in and find out. And the next news, sir, is about India. Well, before that, uh, Japan, how do you think, sir, Japan will respond to balloons flying over it? I mean, by the time they spot it, it had already crossed. Well, sir, uh, in my response is that ASEAN has got balloons all over. I just don't know whether there is uh, uh, tracking going on of anything. They have got very good purview or preview or bird's view of what's happening right across South China Sea, right into various nations. They have persistent and constant incursions into the uh, air defense zone of Taiwan. They are all over Japan on the so southern and northern islands. How are they going to react? They're preparing themselves with their self-defense forces. They will be ready by 2025, not 2023. So how are they going to react? There's no reaction unless United States acts in any of these territories, be it in Philippines, be it in Korea, be it in Taiwan, and be it in Japan. There will be no response from any of these nations other than United States, which has basis in this country, Sriji. And uh, viewers, uh, now about India. India's first or the most primary crude importer now is Russia with almost 28% of its imports coming from Russia. A couple of things about this, Sridharji. One is that I don't see any uh, relief at the pump as far as Indian customer is concerned, consumer is concerned. And, and if India is importing so much, why is there no relief at the pump? Because that will also reduce the prices for all the essential goods and so on and so forth. And the second question that I have for you was, Russia had said that it was going to ban selling oil to the Western Europe from 1st of February. Is that also in place now, sir? See, Russia plays very well uh, the double game. I'll answer the second question first. Yeah. Europe continues to import gas and oil and you know it has it, that the supplies have not diminished except the supplies have not increased the, the the supplies did not go up particularly gas because of the situation uh the favorable uh, situation from a climate point of view it was not adverse winter they used the storage so to some extent 
that they have they have used this and they are still debating whether the cap should be 60% or whether the cap should be 65%. They haven't come to a resolution. So therefore, until that comes on, the, the imports will continue to move on as far as the Europe is concerned. As far as the India is concerned, I think there are, I can only give comment on from a macro. It is helping India to manage the balance sheet in terms of the expenses side um, without the tariffs. Whether it flows into the common man still, uh, that I don't know what co what complex state taxes and state issues are involved. I don't even know. I'm not uh, sorry. I haven't done enough research to find out whether GST applies to uh, to oil or it doesn't. It apply. does not. No, but, it doesn't apply, sir. Yeah. So if that if it doesn't, then I mean, it's a variable very similar to uh, very similar to United States G. Yes, yeah, so, what the, the 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 politics of uh, crude pricing is like this, sir. There are nine states that are going to elections now, and many of them are BJP ruled states. And if BJP wants to make a statement that look, we are passing on the benefits to you, the consumer, and that is that will be well appreciated. But again, the Modi administration I've seen tries to make political capital out of every good move that it makes, which means they are going to defer it until maybe after the state elections are announced. Until then, people will have to go through this, continue to do this thing. I don't really like that kind of an approach, but that's what these people do, and so be it. So let's move on to the next item, sir. The the uh, India is a core partner in the Indo-Pacific, says New Zealand's finance or foreign minister ahead of the India visit. So he's coming visiting. The G20 summit is now going to have a lot of people coming and descending on India. That's what India is thinking is going to be its shining moment of glory in the world. How much does world exposure help Modi in 2024 elections? Your take, sir. Significant. I think it is significant. He's building a goodwill uh, that is significant, notwithstanding a counter punch coming from the left media. I think I, I don't need to uh, mentioned to the vast number of Indian audiences. There's a number of, you know, you know uh, articles, uh, videos, and other kinds of activities uh, that are being advocated against uh, Modi. Uh, there was a report that came out as we got into the uh, studio. The 2019 elections, apparently there was a U.S.-U.K. collaboration to run adverse media against M Modi and BJP coming to power. So if it happened in 2019, and this was stated by a State Department or a foreign a State Department official of United States, this is not a speculation. This is coming from within. We'll probably reveal more details in the, in the next uh, DGI. So therefore, to answer your question, will there be, of course, there is going to be attempts from the left. But I think it helps India on three fronts. One that India is a, G, is a G20 power. And I think that is uh, endorsed by, if you believe in rankings, that Modi again emerged as a number one leader, number one ranked leader in the world. The second, it continues to build goodwill in terms of trade and partnerships with multitudes of uh, nations. Number three, I think India is also anchoring itself as a key player uh, from a policy making point of view in, in a number of areas be it clean energy, be it uh, supply chain security in energy, uh, be it in cybersecurity, be it in space. Uh, so it's, I think, building itself very good set of relationships and also uh, as a policy body uh, for G20. Thank you very much, sir. And now let's turn our attention to Europe. A lot of things happening there also. I forgot to tell our viewers to like this video. Please, please like this video because we need to have many more of you listening. As always, we are two to three days ahead of the mainstream media news cycle. Like what uh, Sridharji mentioned now, we are going to give you that report about how the Western powers tried to see if uh, they could shake the Modi resolve or the Modi government from coming back to power in 2019. And with 2024, effectively, there's going to be a realignment in India's politics. They will have to realign themselves and, and that is a topic for a different day. Let's move on, sir. In Europe, a lot of things happening. What is uh, the first one is that there was a massive earthquake in Turkey, 7.8 Richter scale magnitude. So that kind of raises down buildings. So 7.8 is massive. Uh, can you please give us an update on that, sir? Well, sir, as we again came in, the second earthquake has second 
aftershock. Uh, uh, yeah, say, uh, aftershock. Our second quake has also hit uh, Turkey and uh, uh, Syria. The death toll has risen past 1,300. It was around 500, 600 gone past. The world is coming to the rescue, and including India and United States are sending relief and rescue teams to help Turkey deal with the adversity. So any of these natural calamities has consequences. Uh, and uh, it's good to see uh, the world sink the differences and come to the rescue to deal with the needs of the Turkish people, Shiji. And next one is about um, Biden administration is approving $2.1 billion aid to Ukraine. We already touched upon this in our last DGI. Sridharji, Ukraine, whenever that happens, that when the war stops, it's going to be completely decimated, sir, like post-World War II, how Europe was. Well, I think this is, uh, I think we have covered this several times. Uh, this $2.1 billion, as uh, Sriji rightly pointed out, we touched. This is very specifically focused not on ground, but on air. You know, defending drones, missile system, um, no F-16s, but other capabilities which helps, which will help Ukraine to defend for air raids and attacks and missiles coming from the Russian skies. Too little, too late. And my view is that, as we have stated before, this war should be brought to end. Uh, even if the report was a hoax, if CIA has flown in to find a way to negotiate uh, with uh, Vladimir Putin, I think I think that's a good job that the CIA has done, notwithstanding Putin claiming it to be a hoax, Sriji. Yes, indeed. And uh, uh, former Israeli Prime Minister and a friend of Sridharji, Naftali Bennett, now claims that Putin told him that he will not assassinate Zelensky. Well, um, this, this is all we have today. Sridharji, of course, is on a phone call right after this to check with Naftali Bennett so he can give us the latest on Wednesday. So, Sridharji, you want to add to that? <laughs> no, I think that uh, what Naftali is saying is I was a mediator. And uh, during that period, I tried to bring these two guys to the table. And during the time, he mentioned to me that he's not going to uh, personally target Zelensky. And as long as, uh, you know, certain rules and certain conditions were met. Why he has uh, slept all these days and woken up today to make this statement, I don't know. Probably, um, you know, just very similar to the CIA report. Uh, this is coming out, which is effectively to say, hey, Zelensky, negotiate, man, you know, you, you don't uh, continue this, con don't battle on, and you are uh, you will be in power as long as you are saying, just like to Emperor Xi, uh, to, to Mr., uh, what's the right word, the Tsar, the Russian Tsar, uh, Vladimir Putin, and toe the line, you will be in good shape. Otherwise, you'll keep getting money while we continue to uh, destroy your nation. And that brings us to a close of today's segment of DGI 404. And please like, share and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to click on the bell button for notifications. Sir, this has been a pleasure. We had covered a wide gamut of topics and a relatively quick time. Viewers, please send us your comments about the format and the length of this program. We've tried to keep it under 10 minutes. You, We found out that we cannot give you enough substance when we do it at 10 minutes. So we are trying to be around 20 to 30. Today, we have accomplished that task. As always, Sridharji, a pleasure having you on our channel, sir. We'll be back on Wednesday. Namaskar. Namaskar. Thank you. Have a wonderful day, a wonderful evening.